Sophie, a food photographer from Belgium. Everyone knows you can eat well in Tuscany. And on this journey, I'm about to discover a place that's full of flavor and off the typical tourist path. Prato is where I'm headed. I want to tell you about this journey into tradition and innovation while getting to know the places, flavors and people who've introduced me to the culinary identity of this area, its history, culture and contemporary aspects. <laughs> Mortadella di Prato is the first surprise. Liqueur is one of its ingredients, alkermes to be exact. You can even smell it. The flavor and aroma of Gran Prato, a locally made bread, enhance the taste of the mortadella. Going up into the hills of Montalbano means discovering the authentic flavors of wine from Carmignano and Fetunta, those topped with olive oil and salt. Then there are the dried Carmignano figs. The plain, a stone's throw from the town, has surprising spots, villas and wineries, where wines left to age are made from unexpected varieties, like Pinot Nero. Back in the city, I start exploring some restaurants. There's a balance between tradition and innovation that's striking, as is a dedication to local produce, especially wine. Only the best, of course. Sedani Ripieni is the most traditional savory dish to be found in the city. While the soft and sweet Pesca di Prato reigns supreme. Along with the crunchy Biscotti di Prato, of course. Mmm, Biscotti di Prato. Dipping them in Vinsanto, like Mirko told me, is a unique experience for the senses. Is it possible to enjoy a zero-kilometer cocktail in a modern and lively setting? In Prato, sure, thanks to vermouth, gin, alkermes, produced right here in the city. And then there are the restaurants where creativity is the strong point. Exuding tradition and innovation, these restaurants support local products like Calvanina, a breed of cattle raised in this area. Naturally delicious. How can you not explore Asian cuisine when there's so much on offer? Chinese ravioli aren't similar to the potato ravioli in the Val di Byzantio, where Miss Giuliana taught me how to make them. There's nothing quite like making food with your own two hands. Massimo is a master at using chestnut flour to make biscuits that emanate the flavor and aroma of the forest. Richard, that's how I feel at the end of this short journey. And happy because I've discovered an authentic place full of humanity, tradition and modernity. With lots left to discover, I just know I'll come back to Prato.